Have you ever heard of the Black Devils? I hadn't. But on one of the last days of Black History Month, we have an amazing story for you. National Geographic photographer and explorer and local ER doctor Jeff Guskey joins us with more on the only all African-American unit in the U.S. military in World War I. Thank you for being with us. It's You've an done honor. work all over the world, and we really appreciate you Thank coming you. in today. So who were they? They were the only all African-American unit in the entire U.S. military with all black officers and all black soldiers. And 101 years ago, when they fought so patriotically for our country, that unit was already 49 years old. It's an unknown story of African-American political power and self-determination. Okay, this is amazing to me because when I was doing the research for this, I thought about it and I thought, wow, these men were fighting for the United States before integration before they were still drinking from separate water fountains they were shut out of much of the financial system that's remarkable it's the way they saw themselves they were american visionaries not victims even though they were victimized and they became the living embodiment of abraham lincoln's vision of freedom for all of us after he was assassinated and lived it generation after generation, men, women, families for 50 years. The courage and the dedication just astonishes me. Um, and you might think, why have not I not heard about these people? I think this is important to bring up in, in Black History Month, that uh, a lot of our history was written by people of European descent. So there are a lot of these stories that we don't necessarily find out about in our history classes in school or whatever. And so thank you to the people like you who bring them forward. The, this, their story wasn't a victim story. They were, they were visionaries. They were courageous patriots. And it was the way they saw themselves. And on the last day, the last hour, the last minute of World War I, the last Americans fighting were the Black Devils, the only wow. all African American unit in the U.S. military led by the highest ranking black officer in the U.S. military, whose grandfather was a personal friend of Abraham Lincoln and a pallbearer at his funeral. Wow, what, what, a, what a history for black Americans it to be proud of. It just changes everything. Um, There's so much we don't how know. How did you find out about him? I, after making this discovery of the only trace of a black combat unit that still exists today, which is now featured in the show at the Smithsonian National right. Museum of African American History and Culture in DC, I met with the chief curator of the museum, Dr. Rex Ellis, and halfway through the meeting, he stops me politely he says, Jeff, you have stumbled onto I have a dream before I have a dream. And then he said it again. And that sounds grandiose, but coming from him, it's a big deal. It's an entire unknown birth of modern civil rights before Martin Luther King was born. And it, you're, it, it is on display at the Smithsonian. Through June 14th in Washington, D.C., a few blocks from the White House. So as much as honoring their accomplishments, um, I'm curious on your perspective, since you've studied this, you believe that knowing more about this story can help heal race relations which are somewhat fragile right now. It in seems our like country. no matter what we do, race doesn't get better. And this is like a 125 year old abscess that is hurting us, and we don't even know it's there. And what happened. Or was, a 400 year old abscess. Well, but, but in particular, it, the 125 year old abscess it, it involves the birth of mass media. So it turns out that the same techniques that were used, that would become the Holocaust, were brought here. Um, and are the basis of modern racism, and we don't know it. So it, what I discovered is this. African Americans at that time, this is based upon their words, did not see themselves as subhuman or second-class citizens. They saw themselves as patriotic Americans in a country that was totally imperfect, but had just had th hundreds of thousands of white Americans who died to end slavery. They remembered that. They connect us to that moral moment. The flip side is that there, were, there was a campaign, I believe a conspiracy, to overturn the Civil War that came 30 years after the Civil War. And it was, it was premeditated, it was malicious, it was intentional, and that created the wound that we have today. And no one knew about it for many years. And it's very controversial, and I don't want to drop a bomb on your audience. But I, Now you've got me curious. Can you give us, in, in well, 30 in seconds, thumbnail, can you tell me what you're in, talking in about? In a thumbnail, OK, no one knew about it. It started in 1895, funded by wealthy white industrialists. Mm -hmm. And the myth was that African Americans were subhuman and second-class citizens. And it was intended to overturn the Civil War. 
And it wasn't until 1903 when the first Harvard African American Phi Beta Kappa who graduated in the top 1% of his class named William Monroe Trotter went to jail for pushing back against the dehumanizing myths propagated by media by Booker T. Washington. So African American civil, modern civil rights was born as a pushback by black visionaries against the use of this technique which would become the Holocaust to dehumanize millions of people and poison the conscience of the country. Well, I can't think of anything that's more healing than information. And so um, at the end of Black History Month, we really appreciate your coming on this morning, sharing this story with our audience. Um, if you want more information, you can learn more about the Black Devils on the National Museum of African American History and Culture's website, which is nmaahc.si.edu. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. So, Alana, today, yesterday,